I'm Desi, and I'm a level one chef. I'm Emily, and I'm a level two chef. I'm Saul, I've been a professional chef for the past 22 years. Today I'm making chips and queso. I don't have to wait 20 minutes or three hours for it to be done. Four minutes and I'm ready to go. Mine is great because it has chicken, which is a little like extra hearty. Today I'm making queso fundido with homemade corn tostadas. Too much cheese, it might be no good. <laughs> no, I'm lying, it's always good. First thing first, we're gonna do the hardest part, pull the chips in the bowl. I would guess that Desi has maybe scoop chips. Ooh. Almost threw my back out pouring them chips in there. Scoops? What scoops? Look at that. See that circle? You get a nice scoop. I personally don't use this. Not because I'm better. It just it goes against my religion. I have here some corn tortillas. Cut my tortillas into quarters, just so they're about chip size. I'm going to be making my own corn tostadas instead of chips. Oh, what? Saul's making his own tortillas? That's crazy, I never would have guessed. You can come to my house and I teach you how to make tortillas, Emily. I'm gonna be using blue corn flour harina. This corn is already been stamalized and it already went to so much to get to this point, so this is like the easy way. The lime up. You wanna get all the juices out, you gotta roll it first, so we all don't notice. I'm just gonna lay out my future chips, brush these down on this side with vegetable oil. I'm gonna be adding water slowly, and also the water has to be room temperature. I'm gonna work this dough for five minutes, or six, or seven, you know me. I don't have my numbers straight. So you see, it doesn't stick, it's nice and smooth, like my face. <laughs> Salt, I like them pretty salty. Pepper, tajin. <laughs> A little spicy, but it's gonna work. It's like homemade Doritos. It's chili peppers, salt, citric acid, and lime juice. Emily's trying to steal my swag, that's what I think. So my dough is ready. So since we're making chips and queso, instead of having those sweet ball tortillas dough, we're gonna make some cute little tostaditas, which is con tortilla chips. Okay, there we go. That's cute, that's little, very nice. How do you know the tortilla is ready? When you see the top getting drier, you wanna keep turning, 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 until they're nice and crispy. My chip work of art is ready. I'm gonna take it to the oven, cook it for like 12 to 15 minutes until they're nice and golden brown. Now I'm gonna do ground turkey with some taco seasoning. I'm gonna be adding shredded chicken to my queso. The first thing that I have for my queso and chips is the chorizo. Shredded chicken goes really well into queso. It just sort of melts into the dip. It tastes good, why not? Man, I love chorizo. It has so much seasoning in it. Paprika, cumin, garlic, peppers. And then while that heats up, I'm gonna season my chicken. Just salt, baby popping. Pepper, cumin, chili powder, oregano. Chop it up. Please wear clothes when you're cooking, because it hurts when the stuff pops on you. I'm gonna cook it till it turns brown. Brown it on each side. I want to caramelize this chorizo. I want this to be nice and crunchy. Chicken is the superior poultry choice. Personal opinion. We still know the truth why chicken cross the road, so we can't say chicken is better. My nose is telling me that this is probably good. Chicken stock, and then I'm gonna add my bay leaf. All the textures that we're getting of the cheese is gonna be soft, cheesy, so I wanna add some crunch besides the tostada. My chicken's been simmering for about 12 minutes and should be ready to shred, and I'm just gonna reduce my liquid while I shred my chicken. This can reduce quite a bit. You're gonna use a little bit of it to add to this chicken, but just a sploosh. Let's add a taco seasoning now. We have some chili pepper, some cornstarch, some salt onion powder, some spice and sea salt, and a little potassium. So I'm gonna put some chorizo on the side because I'm going to garnish my queso fundido with chorizo. It smells delicious. I'm just gonna chop my garnishes. I have scallions and cilantro. In the meantime, I'm gonna cut this avocado into thin slices. That's it. Now you can't have chips and queso without cheese. That's like going to the pool and there's no water. You got the velveta cheese, the soft, you don't got to grate anything to the real nacho cheese feel. So for my chips and queso, I'm going to use some poblano peppers and jalapenos. The poblano pepper is the mildest pepper up there. Don't be afraid. It's not spicy. And then the jalapeno, it's a little spicy. Now I'm going to broil this for like 10, 15 minutes. I'll be right back. I have fire roasted chilies in both hot and mild, doubling the amount of chilies without doubling the amount of heat. And then I add vinegar just because I find these on their own are usually not tangy enough for me. Now I'm going to add a little salsa. Just a little. Don't overdo it. I'm basically adding a lot of the same things that are in salsa, but I have a little bit more choice in terms of what flavors go in. Similar vibe, different thing. Like a little pizza with no crust right now. Ta-da! My peppers are broiled. Now, the reason why I'm putting them in a plastic bag is because I want them to sweat all the heat, so like that will be easier to remove the skin. These peppers are happy on this lovely sauna. I'm gonna put them on the side, and now let's do some cooking. I'm gonna be making the corn and the pasote. I'm gonna start with the onion. I'm gonna make julienne strips, olive oil here. 
I'm gonna add some salt to make them sweat. We're sweating everything today. I am just taking out my seeds and the kind of wet part of the tomato so that my queso doesn't get too wet. And now I'm gonna add the corn. Push them with your fingers, all the little hairs. We don't want that. And just cut them like that. So you don't have to clean the mess that you're about to make. Butter, to my pan, garlic, onion, smoked paprika, cumin, chili powder. Lots of black pepper, I love black pepper. And a pasote, the Mexican Italian cousin of the basil. It's very similar. And salt. I'm just going to give my queso base another minute or two. I just kind of want to start the onion softening. I'm not really looking for browning or anything here. Add a little ground turkey. You're really here for the cheese. You're here for the ground turkey. A little circulation going before you heat it up. I'm adding my chilies, tomatoes. It's perfect. So by doing this, this will make it easier for you to remove the skin. I want to make some strips of this because we're making rajas poblana. There we go. Long strips of roasted poblano peppers. And now the jalapenos, the spicy. Now I'm going to add a little bit of heavy cream. This is going to keep this dish creamier and it's going to make it very rich. I'm ready to move on to the most important part, cheese. Finally. Now, I know everybody else is, you know, put it in a skillet. Some people use it in the oven. We ain't doing that. Old school microwave style, baby. Work smarter, not hard, baby. For two minutes. Relax for a second, charge your phone. So what I have here is my base. Now I'm adding a can of evaporated milk. This makes it more liquidy and also creamy. Now I'm gonna add some rajas in here. Oh, look at this. Now to prevent my queso from being oily, I'm gonna add some heavy cream. Look how these colors are getting married. I need a tortilla now. So I have four different cheeses here. White American really adds that creamy mouthfeel. Monterey Jack, which really gives you like the most classic queso flavor. Sharp cheddar, which is like super cheese flavor. And then mozzarella, which just adds like that stretchy cheese pull kind of vibe. This queso Oaxaca, basically it's like a Mexican mozzarella. It's very stringy, look at this. A few more seconds and we're good to go. Look at that. This has baby look. Nice and smooth. This is beautiful right here and chicken. When they all melt together, they make magic. Now, Chihuahua cheese. Doesn't come from a Chihuahua. It comes from the state of Chihuahua. And that's how it's named. It comes from there. We don't want to melt it here. I just want to make sure all the flavors are married. Because when you're married, you're happier. Look at me. My queso is ready to bake. I'm gonna put it in the oven for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna give it a little stir to start combining the cheeses. I'm gonna use my reserved chicken liquid. It needs to be loosened up a little. I'm gonna put this in the broil, and this is nice and caramelized. You'll figure it out, I'll be back. I'm gonna put this back in the oven for another 10 to 15 minutes. All right, this, this looks ready to plate. All it's left to do is put it all together. Gotta make it look fancy though. Look at that. See the difference? It looks like a lot of cheese, but guess what? It's not enough cheese. That's four stars right there. Move this a bit gently so it doesn't spill all over the place. It's like a fresh cheeseburger at a cookout right now. You guys see this? Now to make the fancy plate more fancy, we're gonna add some chips. And garnish. We're gonna add a little ground turkey on top so no one's surprised. So what the avocado is gonna do, this is the butter of my toast, of my tostadas. And now I'm gonna add some of these peppers and onions, some of the rajas, some queso fresco, because what's better than cheese? More cheese. A little bit of chorizo. And now I'm gonna do some agave warm salt. This is gonna add a little bit of smokiness, a little bit of spiciness, and salt. Do worms make salt? It's basically a salt made out of chili powder, salt, and uh, agave worms. It's basically like eating a delicious, crispy chicken wing. Worm salt? Yeah, no, it's <clears throat> Leave that alone. What's wrong with you? This is the best protein you can get. And for last, some cilantro macho. It's a male cilantro. This is my chips and queso. And there it is, my version of chips and queso. And this is my queso and chips. I'm hungry. I worked the whole day for this. I don't want to waste any more time. Tada, even my chip looks great. Am I allowed to try it yet? No. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. mm. 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 Super creamy. And then you get like a little bit of freshness from the scallion and cilantro. It's delicious. I mean, everything in this is just really good. How delicious. See that? See, enough of leaving that chip. I'm so glad I took time to properly shred the chicken because it really melts right into the cheese. It tastes like heaven queso. You know when you go to heaven and it's a lot of cheese? Crunchy, salty, and creamy, chips and queso are so tasty and super versatile. Let's see how each of our three amazing chefs made theirs. 
Desi kept things simple with a bag of scoop style chips. They're made from corn flour, oil, and salt. The dough is shaped, run through a roasting set for dehydration, then fried, salted, and bagged with modified atmospheric packaging. Emily used pre-made corn tortillas that she cut into chips. Corn tortillas are less supple than the wheat version because they don't contain gluten proteins. They may contain gums or hydrocolloids like guar and cellulose that add some pliability. They may contain additional chemicals like propionic acid to reduce mold growth during storage. Saul made his own corn tortillas with blue masa harina, a finely ground cornmeal. Enzymes in the germ of the corn interact with proteins and increase nutrient bioavailability, particularly of vitamin B3 or niacin, which is essential for metabolism. Emily added chicken, cooked to the safe temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Cooked chicken is easier to shred because much of the connective tissue is solubilized. Saul sauteed chorizo, a coarse, spicy, pork-based sausage Emily garnished with cilantro, also called coriander. Some people are genetically predisposed to sense a soapy flavor when they taste it. You can't help your genes. Desi melted Velveeta with jarred salsa in the microwave. Velveeta is a processed cheese product. Velveeta, so named because it melts smooth and feels like velvet, originally contained about 50% cheese. Thanks to federal standards of identity for processed cheeses, these days Velveeta is manufactured mainly from blended milk, oil, protein concentrates, food starch, whey protein concentrate, and various preservatives, and colored with annatto. It does melt like a dream. I think Desi has a great point about working smarter here. Emily made an aromatic queso base. She added evaporated milk, which is made by heating raw milk under pressure until it's reduced to half of its volume. The result is a creamy, viscous, slightly sweet milk. White American, which she also added, is a cheese made from a combination of mostly cheddar and Colby and cannot contain skim milk, whey powders, stabilizers, or other things you might find in Velveeta. She baked her cheeses into her base and was careful to stir it occasionally, which prevented scorching of the whey proteins found in the cheeses. Saul made a queso base of roasted rajas by first roasting, sweating, peeling, deseeding, and chopping the poblanos. Internal ribs have a high concentration of spicy capsaicin compounds, so by removing them, he reduced the queso's spiciness. Saul added Chihuahua and Oaxaca cheeses, both cow's milk cheeses named after the location they were first made. Saul used cilantro macho, which is similar to cilantro, but it has a larger, more elongated, serrated edge to the leaf. He also added worm salt, which is dried, toasted, ground larva from the agave plant. The ground worms are mixed with salt and dried chilies. This tasty spice has been served in food and drinks in Mexico for hundreds of years. Chips and queso are so delicious and satisfying. Next time you find yourself with cheese and tortilla chips, we hope you'll take some of these ideas from our three creative and fun chefs.